Our first guest tonight is a multi-award winning actor, producer, writer, director, and the embodiment of everything America expires to be. You can, did I say expires? <laughs> that may have been a terrible Freudian slip. Uh, you can see him next, uh, alone in an RV with a dog and a homemade robot named Jeff in the new movie, Finch. Uh, lesson number five, live a little. Go ahead. Finch premieres Friday on Apple TV Plus. Please welcome Tom Hanks. <laughs> We did that. We did the cards. I I I I drove. I mean, uh, I, there's swag. I got free stuff in the dressing room that all says, believe it or not, the Jimmy Kimmel Show on it. Yeah. yeah. And so I'm doing a talk show, everybody. You what are. And, and, the talk show. and uh, I'm very happy to hear you. You know, it's funny because this unique thing happened, Jimmy, that I'd like to share. With you. <laughs> Please go on. Now. It does feel like a real talk that show now that you're that here. Clip. I that was, was the you. one in the helmet. Speaking like that. No, no, no. Whole quarter's like that. And the robot was a great guy, Caleb Landry Jones. There was a real guy in well, the robot. He, Caleb Landry Jones was there every single day, knowing that he was going to be replaced by CGI. But all the movements, all the body language, that was him in a robot costume that did not exactly look at it. But he wore a he wore like two inch, uh, excuse me, two feet stilts. So I was always looking up at him. Fabulous. Guy. Did he do that just to make it easier for you? No, he did it because he was getting paid as an actor. Oh, I so see. Okay. <laughs> you know, uh, he's a, he's Seems a, like he could have went he's home. A, he's an artist par excellence. I'm sorry you didn't get to see Shameless the dog. There's only three of us in this movie. There are By three the way, people I gotta tell in you, the movie. I love this movie. Oh. And a dog is not a person. Robot part is debatable, and I thought it was just great. I really did. I thought it was an absolutely great. Uh, movie. As a selfish and competitive actor, I took. I literally, I was three pages into it. I said, "There's, th there's, there's only three people." That well, actually, there's only one person in this movie. I think I'm the man for that job. You do Let seem to gravitate. See if I can't make that happen. Then after that, it's all just, you know, it's all just trying to do with... You do seem to gravitate towards movies where there's no one else around. I don't around. want anybody else there. <laughs> I just want, you know, inanimate objects or, you know, some cute animal that looks at me like this every now and then. Oh, speaking of the animal, I was wondering, was Hooch jealous that you've, we've replaced... You know, dog years are like this. Dogs <laughs> die long, long, long time ago. Oh, no. My, my heart is still filled with Hooch. There's no doubt about it. <laughs> and actually, I still have... I still have some of his, his <laughs> hair comes out every now and again. But Seamus actually asked me questions about, it. was he really that big? That was one of the things Seamus would ask. Yeah, it was Seamus a uh, good dog? Was oh. it, or was well, it? Well, we were, and we got to, I scratched him, loved him, took naps with him. We were shooting one day out in uh, the Navajo Nation, a very, very historic place. And we were doing a scene where um, uh, actually Jeff, uh, Caleb Landry Jones, and, the, and he, we're, we were teaching him how to chase a tennis ball. And that's the only thing this dog truly will do with anybody on the planet. He will chase a tennis ball with, with you. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it loves it. And so we, he was chasing the tennis ball. But we were out in the country, I mean, out in the desert. And far, far away, we heard, ow, 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 during the day. It was the coyotes, the wild coyotes. And, and Seamus was like, ball, ball, tennis ball. <laughs> ow, ow, ow. <laughs> Ball, ball, yes, ball, ball, ball. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> so he was saying, dude, you got to work with us here. And, and Seamus was like, my people. <laughs> <Yeah>. So <laughs> the one, enemy one is more coming. attempt, one more call, and Seamus was gone. He took off to say hi to the folks. Oh, and really? And 19 grown-up people took 
off yelling at, no, shame us, you cumbucker, shame us, shame us. And eventually he kind of like came back on his own, make this long thing, and he goes, what, what, ball, ball, I'm here. <laughs> I have a terrible everybody. question for you. Is there a replacement Seamus ready in case Seamus runs uh, off with the Coyotes? This is how Seamus has the producers by the nuts, if you want to know. What I see. Mean. There is no there's other. Only, there's only one Seamus. Just one. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, there's they only had a one Seamus. stuffed one, but that was only for, you know, Kevin. Is it stuff. true that you were asked to go to space by Jeff Bezos before William Shatner? Well, yeah, provided I, I pay, you know. <laughs> he, and, and, you really? know, it costs like $28 million bucks or something like that. Was... I'm doing good, Jimmy. I'm doing good. But I ain't paying 28 bucks. You know what? We could simulate the experience sure. of going to space right now. Y it's about a 12-minute flight. Is that uh -huh. about it? Yeah. 12-minute flight. Okay, this is, we can all do it in our seats right here. Just lean your back like this, lean back like this, and go. <laughs> <laughs> you do that for That's about, it. You do that for four minutes, all right? <laughs> you do that for four minutes, and then. You get up and you're floating and just take off, take off your, take off your seat belt. Whoa, whoa, this is fabulous, man, oh, what, get back in, all right. And another four minutes of, <laughs> I don't need to spend 28 million bucks to do that. You're not gonna I do can, that. I can do that. Even if it was like, free, you wouldn't do that. Uh, no, I'd do it on occasion just in order to experience the joy. <laughs> Pretending I'm a billionaire. Yeah, I know you love typewriters, you like the manual typewriters. Enjoy. And I was very interested to see that you are hosting a radio show and not a podcast, but a radio show. BossRadio66.com, <laughs> one of the greatest free radio. I'm not an investor. I'm just a fan, BossRadio66.com. This is a website, and Boss Radio, for those who don't know, is this like music format from it, the 60s and 70s. It is stuff 70s. from the 60s, from all around the world that you have never heard before. And an 80-year-old song that you never heard before is still brand new music. So I hear stuff like crazy. So I have I have been able to host a couple of uh, So these are not favorite songs from your youth or No, anything. no, no. They tell me what they're going to play and I kind of look up and find out interesting stuff about it. Like Rod McEwen, the poet was was in some. I find out like uh, He recorded some albums. Well, yeah. he did and they were like guys who were session musicians that went off and formed Moby Grape and stuff like that. So the history of it is is fantastic. But it's that lucrative world of Radio that you know a few things. Yes, I was a disc jockey, a radio disc jockey. How many radio stations were you fired from in the course of? Uh, well, let's see. How many does all of them add up to? No, no, <laughs> not all of them, but all but two of them. I was fired from about five radio. What stations. was the genre? What music were you playing? Like, uh, different uh, top forty, smoke on the water, classic um, rock, uh, uh, adult book, contempt, hot adult. Do the hustle stuff like that? No, that's a little before little my before time. Yeah, time. mostly the eighties, mid eighties. Every time I went back in the days of the dog and pony shows, you would talk about movies. You do a lot of morning zoo radio. Welcome, welcome to the Chuck Bass. I, was, I hey. was on two morning zoos. Whoa, he, here's here's Big Boy and Slammy. <laughs> hey, I'm Slammy. Hey, I'm Big Boy. Hey, look who we got in here. Hey, Mr. Forrest Gump is here. Big boy, Slammy, what do you got to say? What is this movie about? Hey, I'm Slammy, what's the movie about? Hello, star. There was one guy I did one thing, and every 90 seconds, the, the co-host said, hello, star. What? Uh, he just, it was a, I, I think it was WSTR was the name of the radio station. Yeah. And his job was to just always say, hello, star. <laughs> so I'm trying to tell a wacky story about something, and he would always screw up the punch. That's real. hello, star. Hey, I'm big boy and slappy. Hello, star. Was I was a slappy, yeah. And every I time was... I walked into one of these <laughs> studios at 4.30 in the morning, yeah. I saw grown men look at me with this, with this look in their eyes. Get me out of here. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> please, please, let me give away Ben Stein's money. Put me on, <laughs> Take me over the put wall. Put me on with Adam Carolla on the main show. Just get me. Get me out that of here. That was actually me. But, but Boss Radio 66, <laughs> uh, I love it. That's fun. Yeah, that is a lot of fun. I love that you make a little bit of time for something that is just totally fun for you. Nothing but, well, doesn't, when we were growing up, didn't y'all just kind of like, hey, how you doing? It's 24 of the hour. <laughs> a lot of rain coming up. And right now, sing alert at the 405. Look out if you're coming over to support with the path. Going to slow down for the right three lanes. We'll be right back. You know, you want to do that. <laughs> well, that's everybody. You, you can do it. Tom Hanks is here. We'll be right back. We're back with Tom Hanks. <laughs> the morning 
<laughs> Did you have a cuckoo name? Were you like a... Uh, I, I was on two morning Jimmy the zoos. Nut or something like that? No, I had, I was just Jimmy. I wasn't Jimmy the Nut. I was Jimmy the Sports Guy. Oh. I was at one time Vinny the Sports Punk, which was a character I played. Wow. But I was happy to be there. Well, and then every time some celebrity would come in and be all grumbly that they were there in the morning, we'd be like, What's the problem? We're here every morning. <laughs> at 4.30. At 4.30 4 4 in the morning. What yeah. was the, what's, the, what's the prime slot if you're in radio? Morning. Morning drive. That's the From time. From 4 to 6, 4 to 8. 6, uh, 6 to 10 a.m. Oh. 5.30 to 10 a.m. That's the big And then money. if you're unlucky like me, you have to do a shift on Sunday morning, too. Well, yeah. you were in show business, my friend. You were, yeah. <laughs> you, got, were pay, you got paid to say funny things to people <laughs> with a microphone. Yes, and I couldn't hear the, if they were laughing or not, so I just assumed well, they I'm weren't. I would assume they weren't, but yeah. they, they, were, <laughs> uh, they were They were waiting for the next song. They were, they were waiting for that. On a, a serious note, if I may, I, as you know, I love the show Bosom Buddies. Aww. And I all, not only... Do I love Tom Hanks and admire him? Peter Scolari, who is your friend and your co-star and the guy you started with on television, passed away two weeks Peter, ago. Peter walked onto the set saying, we have a guy that's going to be the other bosom buddy. And he's already done two fabulous shows that have been canceled. Uh, and this, we think, could be the third. So um, <laughs> he came in. Peter, Peter had, God bless him, uh, I'll, I'll miss him every day. He had the body of a gymnast. And I mean like a professional like Cirque du Soleil gymnast. He could do like the Iron Triangle and stuff like that. He was a juggler. And to, I don't know how many people like truly do change your lives when you cross paths with them. But he and I met, we picked up his scripts, and we started screwing around. And I actually thought, oh, this is it. This, this is how this works. This is like a hand inside a glove. And for two years at Paramount Studios on Unlucky Stage 25, uh, we, uh, we, we, <laughs> Was that where we the shows went up. to yeah, die? Yeah, yeah. And we were the only two guys on the show. Is Holland Taylor, who I just had lunch with, Wendy Jo Sperber, God bless her, mm -hmm. uh, Donna Dixon, Telma, Telma Hopkins, being right. Peter. Yeah. So the women were down on the other, they had their dressing rooms on the other side of the stage, and me and Peter would be in our pantyhose and our lip gloss. And our, you know, our hairnets, you know, over our. Oh, there you go. If that you was, didn't know the show, was from the buddies. pilot. That was from, that's 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 me and Peter. That's Hildy and Buffy. <laughs> and understand. So these two guys would be leaning in the dressing room, you know, the doors of each other's dressing room, saying, "You think you're going to have more kids? Well, yeah, I've got two. You know, I'd like to have some other because I, I think, I, you know, I'm beginning to think of where I'm going to settle that. You know, we were molecularly connected yeah. in a way that we started speaking um, speaking the same language. Particularly, our show was not on film; it was on video in order to save money. So much like this, we had cameras with these tally lights. And our, our, blo our Thursday rehearsals were dress rehearsals and camera blocking, which were really 14 hours. We had to stay on the set and say every line over and over and over again. So we started screwing around. You know, we started monkeying around with the script and playing around with, uh, with uh, props and whatnot. And the directors were up in a booth doing that kind of line cut, you know, where they're saying, and tighten up on three and camera three. All right, back to two and a two shot and Two. Oh, coming back to four. Four wide, please. Wider, 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 and four. So they're trying to do this upstairs in a booth that we have no idea where they are or what we're doing there. We're just screwing around. And we're making up new lines. We're playing things around. And so we'd always hear on the, on the studio talk back. Uh, hey, talk, guys, 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 guys. Are you going to say that? We might. Well, it's not in the, it's not in the script. Yeah, well, we might say it because it works. If it works, it works, right? Well, uh, can 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 you can you give us can you give us a moment? Can you give us a moment? Yeah, sure, go ahead. And then we'd come up with something else. <laughs> and then they'd come back again and say, Wait, wait, wait! We just figured out the one thing you're gonna do. You're gonna do that too. We might, we might, <laughs> we might. And if, if we would we get so bad. Well, okay, one guy, one guy who lasted one week. All right, stop. He's calling that stop. Stop. Really? Stop, you guys, you guys. We're trying to figure out the shots up here. And every time we come back, you're saying something different. We're trying to figure this out. You guys have got to help us. Well, then figure it out. Look, if you guys think you could do a better job, why don't you come up here and direct the show yourself? And Peter's like, I'm on my way. <laughs> Peter would say, I can do that job. And I'm like, dude, dude. Dude, dude, uh, you know, I, I have ADHD. You have rage issues. Let's, let's, uh, let's do it. So, so we, had, we had two years of doing this in which 
you know, you shoot for three weeks and have one week off. And ev every every week was some brand of cuckoo um, uh, adventure. Can we can we show the clip? Yeah, we have a clip. All right. This, I th this clip is unusual because you're not in the dress, this, is it? The second season, we were we were uh, we had our own commercial production company. All right. Uh -huh. Uh, and uh, 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 Henry, Peter, was a writer, and Kip, myself, were an artist. So we went off to uh, a cabin in the woods to, to write and paint and get in touch with, with our artistic stuff. So what was unique about it was it was actually, we remember it as a really fond show because it was just us for one half of the, of the episode. They were doing a scene with literally a live tiger in the other, uh, the, uh, they shot that during the day. So we were the only ones who were working all week live and at night. And so we, were, we, we, we cut it up. But th this, this will show the, the ease and the affection and just how much fun this uh, Here it is, we're going back in time, the, uh, the way back machine I'm here. I'm gonna say it's, this is 1981. Okay. So this is close to 40 years ago. Bosom Buddies, take a look. <laughs> I feel good. Yeah, I feel great. I feel, I feel pretty good. Fine. I feel like hell. I can't get over how we fought, how base man is, how self-involved, you know. Henry, I'm hungry, and I cannot discuss philosophy when I am hungry. I'm so hungry, last night I ate my albino snake. I've been spitting up wood chips all day long. Henry, we have one can of soup left to last us for two more days. And once that soup is gone, there is nothing left, Henry. Nothing, nothing to eat except... <laughs> Get out of here. Henry, let's, let's make a pact, huh? Come on, come on. Let's make a pact that if I should be the first to go and you have this sudden craving for... Protein. <laughs> what are you doing, tenderizing me? Kip, Kipper, Kip Kebab. Get a hold of yourself. Who is it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> now, <It's> great. <laughs> uh, Peter, Peter, Peter has a lovely family. His wife Tracy, has got absolutely great kids, and we lost them to the emperor of all maladies. So, thanks for letting us show that. Tom so, um, Hanks, everybody. Finch premieres Friday on Apple TV Plus. Thank you for being with us. We'll be back with June Diane Raphael. Hi, I'm Jimmy Kimmel, and this is the Internet. I made it myself. Hit subscribe if you like it.